Hello and welcome to Topical Top Tens here on the Football 365 Show. I'm your host Mark Smith and I'm here with Sarah Winterburn. Sarah Winterburn, what is our Top 10 this week? Hello Mark Smith, it's the Top 10 current free agents with Premier League experience. Lovely stuff. Um, Just to pre-warn viewers, uh, there are some genuinely insane choices in this Top 10 and I feel a bit embarrassed that I'm attached to it at all. Right then, let's get into it. Number 10, we've got Samir Nasri. Sarah, why is he in your list? Why, oh, why is he in your list? Um, because when you've done nine, you have to then find a tenth. Because <laughs> no one ever does a topical top nine. It doesn't even, it's not even, you know, it doesn't even, it doesn't scan, does it? So he's There's purely in, he's purely in just to make Makeup it a round number, ten. is that it? Makeup 10. Yeah, that's, right, it. Okay. that's exactly it. Because I was going to put Pedro in and then I realised he's done his shoulders so he can't. He can't okay. be in there. So we've gone for Sammy and Azri. You should all sign. Everybody should sign him. He's great. Oh, great. That'll do. Right, number nine. <laughs> number nine, we've got a more recent, more uh, sort of relevant player, I'd say. Uh, someone who's sort of disappeared off the face of the earth, but Nathaniel Klein at number nine. Is that just because he rhymes? Is that how arbitrary it's become? Yeah, number nine, Nathaniel Klein. <laughs> number eight. Oh, God. Gareth Southgate. Um, no, um, Good stuff. Not bad off the top of my head. Um, we assume that there's a footballer still in there. I mean, it, it, it's difficult to remember that he actually did play for Bournemouth not that long ago. That was, you know, less than 18 months ago. So there, there is a man who can still kick a football there. He just hasn't done it an awful lot for Liverpool. By all, by all reports, I think he's fit. So um, I presume some, some sort of bottom half of the table side will eventually think, oh, didn't he used to be any good? And then, mm, yeah. and then we'll find out. Yeah, I mean... Like you say, it wasn't long ago he was at Liverpool and looking like a you know good signing for them. I, I don't know what's really happened there. Is, is it purely injury? Is it is that? I what think you it's put purely. It down to? In, I think it is purely injuries, and then obviously the toll that those injuries take, you know, on someone's someone's sort of demeanour and things. Maybe probably has done in being at Liverpool at the moment as a right back is not a great place to be. Yeah, anyway, no. <laughs> you ain't going to get a game. Um, no. But he did. He looked okay at Bournemouth. Not great, but but okay enough to get another another knock somewhere I imagine he will somebody you might have to wait right to the last minute I guess it's gonna be one of those funny summers isn't it keep saying summers as if it's a summer it's not really no it's, um, not. it's gonna be one of those funny summers where if there's no money around then eventually eventually people look around and think who can we get for nothing and that's yeah. when Nathaniel Klein is king and could be a really good shout for, for a pick actually uh, right number eight we've got someone who looks like they might be on their way somewhere this week this is how good this top 10 is we're picking out players who are going to get moves imminently because they are excellent choices of free transfer. It's Jeff Hendrick. Apart from, apart from number 10. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and nine, potentially. Yeah, and nine, and possibly seven, six, five. We haven't got there yet. Um, Jeff Hendrick, very sort of reliable uh, right winger, stroke central midfielder. Yep. Uh, crowbarred into the right wing by Sean Dyche really um never really played like a right winger he's, but he can do a job for you anywhere across the midfield do a jo- he's missed a do a job isn't he, he we had him at derby for a few years and i've seen him close up a lot of times then where's he going to end up he's going to end up at newcastle obviously of course <laughs> of course Bruce, for more british and irish players who can do a job and this is obviously the dream that the newcastle fans were sold earlier this year this is what they dreamt of you know we were talking about edison cavani they were talking about you know killian and back but what they really want Jeff Hendry. Yeah, but you know what? He is. I, I do stand up for him. As I say, he's ex-Derby, <laughs> so I've seen a lot of him. I like him a lot, and I think there's a few teams that would, who maybe not first teams would be strengthened by him, but certainly mm. the squad would be strengthened by him. And as a free transfer, I think it's a, a great oh, shot. Oh yeah, it's a bit of a, there was even talk of AC Milan earlier in the summer, which yeah, was there was yeah, wonderful. I love that kind of thing. I, that would have been amazing. I, Jeff he's got Hendry. the hair for it as well. He's got very cool he hair. Has. I mean, if you squint, he could be Italian. It could be. Uh, right, number seven, uh, someone who I think you've got to squint really hard at to still see a footballer at all. Uh, Branislav Ivanovic, you've gone for. This man must be at least 500 years of age by now. He's 427 now. Okay, and bizarrely, right, well. he's uh, very, very strongly linked with Everton, uh, which right. makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, you, know, you know, Carlo Ancelotti having to look at him and thinking, oh, yeah, now that is an arse I need in my dressing room. <laughs> I mean, he does have a monstrous, he has monstrous buttocks, and I think that's reason alone. Reason alone for bringing him in on a free transfer. He, I think I, I looked at him, he's, 50, he's 35, I think. I mean, but I think he's one of those, you just wouldn't dare drop him. So he could probably play till he's about 47 just because he'd just look at you. Like, what? Yeah. You, you're going to put him on the brings, bench? So not only would he be marketable uh, for the club shop with his ginormous ass, 
but also he does bring a lot of XXL shorts. He would, but he brings a lot of uh, a lot of really top level experience, doesn't he? And if you've got, I mean, maybe not Everton so much, but if you've got a younger side who who just Mm. looking for someone who can be, uh, you know, the the rallying point of the team, I think he could be a good shout, even if he doesn't start that many games. Yeah, I think so. I think so. There's never been any questions about his attitude, and also. You know, as I found out during the latter stages of my own pretty pathetic football career, if you never have any pace, losing it is not an issue. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Right, uh, uh, number six, we've got Fabio Barini. Oh, Fabio Barini. I would love to see Barini come back, uh, just to disprove um, all the theories that he was entirely uh, promoted beyond his, beyond his standing by Brendan Rodgers for, for reasons utterly unknown. What, you know, the fact that he signed for Liverpool is, still sounds as preposterous today as it did then. And he yeah. was incredibly underwhelming for them. And then he, one of those that you thought, oh, maybe he'll do a job further down. And then he went to Sunderland and no, uh, not really. <laughs> so, he, was at, he was at Swansea as well, wasn't he? Yeah, he was in all right And he, he looked very good there, yeah. Yeah, decent, decent. One of those players where you, you think, yeah, he's not good enough for the, one of the big teams. And then one of the big teams just signs him and you think, he's, he's you know, prove me wrong because he's, he's clearly not good enough. And yeah, he wasn't. But he's one of them, he could come back and do, you know, I keep saying do a job. Why, what is it about free transfers that makes you want to say do a job? It's like... Well, I think, do, you, do you think the, the expectation is uh, a lot lower for a free transfer? Or do you think that actually a lot of the time you are making up that financial gap by paying them extortionate wages? So the expectation should actually be just as high, if not higher? Maybe, but I don't think Fabio Barini is going to claim extortion away. 600 grand a week, Gareth Bale money. <laughs> Uh, right. I really understand that when you're talking about sort of Benfica <laughs> possibly not signing Cavani because he wants like four billion pound a year. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Newcastle are going to balk because Jeff Hendricks asked for you know twenty grand. Doesn't <laughs> he? Uh, let's move on to number five and Loic Remy. I'm I am genuinely a great fan of Loic Remy. I think he's a yeah. great footballer, a great striker. Uh, was was brilliant for that little patch at QPR and then you know did okay at Chelsea. Uh, you know he's. He's just one of those players, and you almost feel like he is almost a bit ageless. I think he's about 32, 33, but I, I do get the feeling he could probably do two or three more years. And he's not, not been scoring goals. He's, he's, he's not prolific, but he's scored a few goals for Lille over the next or last couple of seasons. I certainly think there's a job there. I mean, you know, yeah. someone like Leeds or someone like that who is kind of lacking a bit of a, you know, Sheffield United, just un, unfancied club who just think, Actually, do you know what? He's probably good for sort of six, seven goals a season at Premier League level. Yeah, yeah. And also he's someone who, who used to rely on pace. And I think in recent years, he's a smart enough player, he's an intelligent enough footballer to have been able to work out the next phase of his career. And so I think, you know, as he will lose that pace as he gets a bit older, he's, he's worked it out and he, he could go for another few years yet. Especially, yeah, like you say, Leeds. I mean, they, they absolutely lack any real options past Bamford. And you could argue that Bamford maybe not be Premier argue, League class yeah. anyway. No, exactly. I mean, Bamford didn't, didn't in, in that Leeds team, not to have scored sort of 25 goals in the Championship is almost a sign that it's not going to work out in the Premier League. I don't, you know, with the best one in the world, he's not a Premier League striker and it's been proven no. before. Uh, so, so someone like Remy would be a great shout, I think. Obviously, he won't do that. He'll buy some sort of 19-year-old from Cardiff that we've never heard of and make him absolutely brilliant. But Remy yeah. would be a great shout. Yes, I agree. Uh, number four, someone who I think is sort of a, a cult icon. Definitely someone who I have always loved watching, but I think mm. might be a nightmare if you played for your team. It's uh, Hatem Ben Arfa. Yeah, I've, I've always loved watching him as well. I mean, I really wanted him to come back. He's, he's, been, he's been linked a few times over the last few years because he had a bit of a renaissance, didn't he? After he'd left Newcastle and then he, he got back in the French side. And, yeah. he, you know, he, he sort of, he's disappeared a little bit now. I had to look at where he was. He was he, he's been in Spain for the last few, few months, not really playing that much, um, a lot of injuries. He, again, he's not a player that you're going to expect to play every week. You don't, don't be, you know, signing Hatem Banal for thinking you're going to get 38 Premier League appearances out of him. But you might just get enough to keep you up. I think that's, you know, yes. one of the, he might just turn out with, come up with two or three performances in a season that you know change you from a six out of ten side to an eight out of ten side for just long enough yeah he's also up. he's also someone who might not start a lot of games but you'd feel mm. like as an option off the bench he'd finish a lot of games and he can he yeah. can do something in that last 20 or 30 minutes um yeah i think he'd, i think roll the dice on him but then if you have got a tight squad and a, a good team spirit he is a risky one to bring in isn't he Absolutely. I mean, I can't imagine Newcastle signing him again. You know, he's he's probably the opposite to Jeff Hendrick in terms of you know, <laughs> the ability uh, on the ability and um, sort of potential trouble graph. 
he's probably yeah. sort of on the opposite end of that but you know what and maybe it's our age but i just want to say bring these people back <laughs> Bring them back. Get them back in the Anybody Premier League. It's fun to watch. Let's have them. This might be the one year when, because there's no money around, like everyone just goes, you know, sod it. Let's bring back Katem Benarf. Let's bring back Nassar. Get yeah, the old band back together. <laughs> yeah. One last gig. Right. Uh, number three. And I can't believe that this man is 30 years of age. When I Googled him just before we started recording, I was honestly staggered by it. It's uh, Alexander Pato. Yeah, apparently only 30. Which I is cannot believe it. bizarre, isn't it? I, I sort of saw him on and looked at the list and thought, oh no, he's not an option because he's like 46. And, yeah, and then it turns yeah. out he's 30 years old. Uh, one of those absolutely lost talents, isn't he? You know, one of the great, we're supposed to be so brilliant, sort of late, the late um, 2000s, yeah. cited as probably one of the great players, one of the ones that was really going to push that next. The, the next, the next generation, the, the next, next generational the next, player. The next. Yeah. yeah. And just never quite, did he? And the sort of the spell at Chelsea, I mean, you know, we've talked about Premier League experience. The, the laugh is with Alex Pato, obviously. He, he played twice for Chelsea in the Premier League. Yeah. He still I mean, counts, though, with, an, with an he scored parameters. Once. He scored once. So, you know, he's, he's got a, a hell of a rate. strike rate. Yeah, I mean, it's a penalty. And I think it was a 5-0. But um, it still counts. It still, it still counts. It still counts. And where has he been? He's been to Sao Paulo and he's been playing quite well. Um, would he come back to Europe? Probably not. I mean... You can't imagine it having gone home to... Uh, well, well, well not, it's not even... It's not would he come back. I think it's would anybody take the gamble on him. I can't mm. think of a team who, who would. Yes, he fits in with our parameters of being a, a, a potential free transfer who's got Premier League experience. But realistically, do you see any, any team doing Un- that this summer? Unfortunately not. Unfortunately no. not. I mean, it'd be, it'd be wonderful, wouldn't it, if Aston Villa just went, you know, we're going to sell Jack Grealish eventually yeah. you know it's fine we're going to sell him we'll take we'll take never mind the 80 million we'll take 50 million for him yeah because we've got a replacement <laughs> yeah and, and we'll hold tight actually, and see who it is <laughs> this is nailed on this is you know this what a brilliant piece of business we've done <laughs> he's only five and he's only five and a half years older than Grealish that exactly. think of that crazy exactly so if you get right. 50 million for one and get the other for nothing great business uh, <laughs> yeah. number two we're getting towards the sharp end now this is the yeah. tasty part of the uh, the top 10 uh, Daniel Sturridge I mean he's a guy who's got fantastic Premier League experience a proven player at this level he's been off in uh, is it Turkey for the last mm-hmm. season um, then got, then got surely, banned yes he for did all the gambling nonsense um, surely someone's going to come in for Daniel Sturridge aren't oh, they you'd think so. he's got unfinished it, business yeah the problem with Daniel Sturridge is though we all thought he was going to be brilliant when he went to West Brom on loan and thought oh yes. yeah here's the chance here's the one he was fucking awful <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So there is that sort of caveat of like, um, maybe maybe he hasn't still got it. He scored a few goals in Turkey, didn't do badly. Yep. I think they quite liked him. Um, I do think, surely, surely he's, he's worth a punt. He's not that old. He's a great finisher. He's a great yes. finisher. I mean, terrible dancer, great finisher. But yeah, I'm saying bring him back. I would say bring them all back. Let's start, let's start the hashtag. Bring him home. <laughs> bring him home. Right, number one on our list. Uh, it's a player who I uh, have very much enjoyed watching, uh, but have gone off him big time because of what he did to his club towards the end of the season. Uh, Ryan Fraser. Yeah, this is an actual real footballer. He's actually playing real football, or, yes. or was doing up to quite recently, until he decided, do you know what? <laughs> it's not for me, this relegation running, because I might get injured, because I'm going to have a big free transfer. Obviously, we've got the wonderful karma, isn't it, that he was linked with, very strongly with Arsenal, a little yep. bit with Chelsea. Everyone thought he was going to, you know, at least join that kind of rank of club, possibly a sort of an Everton, that kind of ranking. You know, then it comes down to it. It's like, Palace? <laughs> you know? Yeah, take a sideways but, step. Yeah, absolutely. Because he's done himself a, a whole load of, of sort of bad publicity there, hasn't he? Didn't have the great season, uh, admitted himself, his head wasn't in it, uh, which isn't a good look to start with. And then just sort of goes, oh, no, I'm not going to play. Not going to play. Yeah, well, you see it a lot in American sports where they might have a year left on their contract in the NFL, for example. And mm. they think, well, I'm not going to risk it because I can get a genuinely, seriously career-ending injury and, and it's yeah. not quite worth it. I understand that a little bit. And you do, of course, have the risk of injury in the Premier League. But for Ryan Fraser, from a, the point of view of a potential manager at another club looking at you, there's no way you can it's sign n- that guy. No, I, I don't trust you. You're look, not going to be in the trenches with your teammates. Stuff. You've been with those guys for years. I just think it's, yeah, I think it it looks terrible. 
he's a good player, but he's not good enough to do that. You know, if this is Ronaldo or something, it's different. Yeah, he's probably the only man on this list who's going to get a game in the Premier League next season. (laughs) Well, him and him and Jeff Hendrick. I think Nasri. I think Nasri on that list is going to be here. Come on, bring it on. Maybe we've just got to wait for Derby to go up, and, and then they can sign him. Well, we can only dream. Right, uh, Sarah Winterburn, thank you very much for your top 10. Some of them very questionable, as ever. <laughs> Just saying it how it is. Uh, we'll be back this time next week. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can email us at the editor at football365.com. From me and Sarah Winterburn, goodbye. Goodbye.